Okay everyone, welcome to tutorial number three for Farming Simulator 2015 and we're using uh, Giants Editor uh, version 6.0.3 to show you how to do the basics of map making for uh, Farming Simulator 2015. If you haven't watched the first two videos then I would strongly recommend you do so. The first video will show you how to get hold of this editor that we've got here and also this uh, blank starter map. <coughs> Uh, that we're using here for the purposes of this demonstration. The second video will show you how to set up the screen in the correct way. Uh, all these little windows here and what they do and all these buttons at the top here. So the first two videos are very important if you haven't seen them. If you have watched the videos then you're probably eager to start getting on with uh, making a map and editing the map yourself. Before we do that, before I show you some of the details of that, just to explain about this particular starter map. It's the one by Robbie. Um, we downloaded this and showed you how to install it on the first video. The way or the reason why I like this is all this equipment here has all been moved into the corner deliberately so that you can be happily making a map in this area and all the stuff that you can use, which is in the default map, has all been shoved into the corner here. Everything you could possibly need from these big buildings here, which is, this one's a shipping office for example, right down to the tiny little details of there, if we zoom right into that, you'll see there's one little gold coin. And we can click on that if we wanted to. So. All, on all the, uh, the triggers that we need, all the cell points, there's the, uh, the what do you call it, the dairy silos and things, we've got the waterfalls, trees and bushes are all here, um, but there's a, a quite a nice little bridge there, and there's all these, anyway, everything that you could possibly need to put in your map that was in the default map is all here. Um, We'll show you another advantage of having all that there shortly, but we're going to go through the basics first of all, and that's explaining what we've got uh, in this window here. Everything we've just had a look at, let's go back over actually, everything we've just had a look at is in the scenograph. The scenograph, if you can imagine this has been just a set of folders. We've got some very important things ones at the top, uh, perspective and that's what we're looking at at the moment. We've got the sun which if you look up there don't muck about with that unless you really know what you're doing. Um, just leave that as it is, you don't need to touch it. The terrain, uh, again unless you know what you're doing you're better leaving that as it is. Don't move that up or down or move it around. The career start point is if we were going to go into the map now to test it that is where our character would start. And at this point in time, we would be, oops, uh, we would be standing round about here, facing this direction, when we went into game to test it, because you always face where the blue arrow is facing. Um, and then next thing down, we've got all you need. If you just click on that itself, you'll see that everything there is selected. That's because everything that you see here is in, if you like, this folder. If you want to deselect something at any time, by the way, and you'll see me do it quite often, just click anywhere in the blank in the sky. So if you've got something selected and you want to deselect it, just click the sky. Gets rid of it. Right. So all this is now open. Let's, let's close the ones we don't need. So we've got everything in here, all we need. What happens here, this is like folders. See the three symbols here, we've got square, triangle, and a circle. This is what's known as a transform group, or if you'd like to think that as a file, that would maybe be a, a file. And then inside that file, we've got all these other transform groups, which are, as you can see, other files. Let's take a simple one. We'll take, um, there isn't actually a simple one, the trees. So if we click on that, and then we'll open all these folders, 
uh, which are the different trees that we've got available. If we click on that and then turn around, we'll see that the trees that we've got available to use in the map are now highlighted. And that's the different trees we've got to use, or we or allowed to use, we can use. If we click on the individual one, we'll see the individual trees highlighted, highlighted each time we click one. So there's the, all the different uh, trees. Uh, that tree scape, by the way, is that. And I'll explain that some other time. Then we've got the oak and the spruce. So that's the default trees. Now, you'll notice that these are in folders themselves. So if we click on this one, for example, the spruce, it opens up two other little boxes. Um, that is the actual, uh, if you like, the independent parts of the tree that makes up the whole tree. If you'll see, we've only got part of it selected. If I click on that, you'll see there's a slight difference. This one's the attachments, and that's that. I believe that's got something to do with that. That load one has got something to do with the. Um, um, the way it loads into the editor or something like I don't know. Do we need to know it? No. The important thing to remember is that if you're going to move something like this tree, for example, make sure you've got the whole file selected when you move it rather than a part of it. Because if you were to move that part away and you've left this part here, it causes you big, big problems. Undo button, wonderful thing. Likewise, that load thing, which I think is the collision, I'm not entirely sure, but if you were to move that out of the way and then move this part of the tree and use that, then you would have this and you could bump into it in the map. So when you've got a group of things here, but one item, you're better selecting the main group and then using that to move things. So, so it's a bit the same with buildings as well. Let's find one. Um, I can't find it in the... No, that's not a very good example. Let's try this one. Yeah, that shipping office. That we've, we've got the whole thing selected here, but it's actually got a group inside. So if we only selected that, for example, and we moved it, we're not moving the whole thing. Although it does look like a bad example. Let's move, say, just the load 2. If we move that out of the way, we've just moved some of the parts of it, which has left this behind, but we don't want that. Right. So we're going to make a map. That's all, all I wanted to do there at that point is just explain what all this stuff is in here. What we're going to do now, though, is just a quick demonstration of uh, these buttons up here and the difference between them. The next video I will show you exactly what to do with them. So we open up our terrain editing window, expand that out so that we've got a good view of it and we can move it right up there. Right, so we've basically got a blank map. Flat, it's all nice and green and it's all ready for us to do something magic with. This button here all I'm going to do is explain what these buttons do. The actual details of how we do it, I will explain shortly. But this button here is the button that we need to change the height of the terrain, for example. If we wanted to uh, build a, or make a sort of rounded hill here, for example, we would use that button. If we wanted to decrease that, we would decrease it with the right hand mouse button. If we wanted to smooth it off, we would use the middle mouse button. Now, how I'm actually doing that, I will go into a lot more detail in the next video. The next button is the terrain painting mode. And that depends on what we've got the texture layer here um, selected for. For dirt, for example, it will give us a, a nice dirt texture. Let's move the brush, make the brush smaller. It gives a dirt texture on that particular part of the ground. We can pick another one, and uh, say rock, and we can put a rock texture down, then we can pick another one, and we can put asphalt down, and so on. Uh, more about that in the next video as well. 
This one is for changing the cow, sheep and um, chicken mesh. That's a bit more specialist so we'll come back to that after. This one is for painting down uh, first of all our field texture and then eventually putting down our crops as well. Uh, and again more details about all and how to do that in the next video. So that was basically just a very very quick video on uh, the the basics of what we're going to talk about in the next one really because we're going to go out in a bit more detail about all these features which I've just explained. I know it's, it possibly sounds a little bit crazy that I haven't done it in this video uh, while I'm at it but um, I'm just putting all this back to normal oh. so that when we start the next video we will be able to do exactly the right things and what we need to do <coughs> so this the end of this video the next video will explain how to do each individual one of those in a lot more detail so thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video